and we are back with another Black Window Cream podcast, and it's a new episode every single Wednesday. <laughs> Dave, tell them what it is. Every Wednesday, new episode every Wednesday and Sunday. I'm your host Ben Haggerty, aka Ben Blue Bros. World, and this is my friend David Malave. And today we are here to talk to you about something serious. The title of this episode, I think, is "Buying It Won't Solve Your Problems." Right? Yes. It's a fucking great idea. It's a great idea. It's a great topic. Swag. A little wordy for the thumbnail, but we'll make it work. We'll make it work. We need new thumbnails anyway. Um, we have a cool announcement coming out on uh, Sunday. So, A, the podcast, the the interviewee is Dave right here. I interviewed Dave for the first time ever, which is amazing. So, uh, if you want to hear Dave's whole fucking story, God willing, it's yeah. available. <laughs> <laughs> if you even want to hear that long ass shit. It's a, good, it's a great story and it comes out on Sunday. But in the intro, we are announcing a new Black Window Cream contest that you will not want to miss slash partnership slash, slash partnership. opportunity slash big ass opportunity um and cash prize and there's only a certain amount of people that can be a part of it so if you want to be one of those people you need to listen early um so sunday that happens we just recorded a fucking great podcast or a patreon only podcast episode the morning roast for um our patreon people shout out to all you guys for supporting and listening um it's fire june our June episode? How do we call it? What do we do? It's We do one every... One what? every month. So this a is, bonus this episode is, this every This is month. for every month. This is for... We already released last month, so... And tomorrow we'll, tomorrow we'll be releasing this month. So if you join, you'll get two bonus Oh, roasts. yeah. That's a good way to look at it. Woo! Swag. Yeah, you unlock two bonus roading, uh, Morning Roast episodes. Last week we... Or last m- month we talked... What was it called? Last month was... Uh, perfecting your workflows yeah. and systems we basically walked through like a bunch of different ways tricks uh methods of improving how you're you operate creatively in a bunch of different ways we, we talked for honestly that was on we did a long one we were enjoying ourselves it was so, a good one that was dope not that we don't enjoy ourselves every day folks. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we just more willing to just sit here and talk yeah and talk shit. sometimes it's just easy and we probably just got the mics and shit so it was a, it was yeah, a vibe exactly uh, the one that we just recorded uh earlier today was fuck you bitch that's the title of this one and we go over the idea of when it is appropriate to throw out a fuck you bid which if you don't know what that is it's it's not a real term uh, my boy travis lloyd uh said it to me and i thought it was really dope he's a public speaker we've had him on the podcast before um and we actually called him in and talked to him on this episode so fire fire episode if you want to learn about uh how to learn about how about may how to make double your money double your money basically basically just but in a in a much more informed and intelligent way than than that in an appropriate way to say i want more money to your clients so fuck you bits available on our patreon patreon.com slash black window cream thank you to everyone that is supporting us on patreon all right cool so today buying it won't solve your problems let's uh let's hit that intro right quick and then and then we'll fuck (laughs) and then we'll uh then we'll talk about it all right go attention if you stop this podcast recording at any time you will die i don't want to die do you want to live You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding. You won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... Goes to... Black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you would say that. And we're back. We're back. We're back. It always seems so long. It doesn't. It's not. It is awkward as shit. If you don't watch our YouTube videos, you should check out at least one intro just to get a vibe for <laughs> what happens when that when that intro audio plays. Uh, because there's a there's a visual experience and it's fucking fire. Uh, we're back, you guys. Buying it won't solve your problems. It's uh, the reason why I don't. We kind of got into it. There is a creative route that we're gonna tr- take to talk about it, but I just started thinking about it because I really want a Tesla, and. It's like fucking so dumb because I just want that shit. And it's, I, I feel like that whenever it comes to something new, a piece of gear, a cell phone, fucking Amazon deliveries, like I'm like, oh God, is it here yet? And it's like the dumbest shit ever. It's probably like Windex or something, but I need the, I need the fucking box. Like I need, it's coming to me. It's mine. I bought it. I need it now. You know what I mean? Yes. And I, I definitely know. I hate that depleting feeling when it's like you got it and now it's yours and now you don't think about it no more. 
And to me, I was thinking like, oh, I need a Tesla. I need a Tesla. I'm like, but then I get the Tesla and you just spend like how, I mean, Teslas are expensive. Like if you get the base model, it is what it is like 30 grand. But if you get the fucking dope ones, those shits are expensive and you're just going to get it. And then you have the car and then the car is your car. And now you're just used to it because this is just what you drive, and it doesn't mean much. And to then you, anymore. and then you have old water bottles in there, and yeah. fucking crumbs, and all this other shit. And right. It's the same as anything now. Lauren's right. workout towels and shit, yeah. and it smells like ass. <laughs> so it's like, well, what the fuck? But to me, it's. I feel like that happens all the time with my gear. And then when I brought it up to you, I was like, I don't know what I want to talk about with this. I just like this idea of like how, I don't know how depressing it is because you just really need that shit. And then you get that shit and then it's your fucking iPhone. You can just throw it over the room like this. And that's a thousand dollars. I threw it, I threw it across the room. Or, I don't or you jump, fuck. you jump in a pool with it at Berlin and it breaks after it, I tell you not to. It did break and it said it wouldn't. So that's fucking wild. But, or you, what else? Why you gotta keep bringing all these <laughs> up, dude? Or you, you're like, I need the iPhone XS. And I'm like, we were like, isn't it the same as the iPhone X? And then you're like, no, it's not. And you went and bought it. And then you're like, dude, what the fuck? It's the same. It's the same phone. <laughs> I don't know why I upgraded. It was unnecessary. And it added like an extra $10 a month to my expenses. <laughs> but it, I had to have it. It was brand new. And it's fucking stupid. The iPad, bro. I needed the iPad. I needed the iPad. I wanted the iPad pencil. I wanted the iPad. And then I got the iPad and I made an excuse because I was doing my taxes. So I said I needed it to like mark up my fucking, I, some bullshit paper. And instead of just printing it out with my printer, I went and bought a thousand dollar, thousand dollar iPad and got the pencil. So I was like 1200. And then I got the fucking protector, which was another 150. And now I don't use it. It literally, Lauren uses it all the time. I never use it. Why did I buy that shit? I needed it. And it's this weird feeling, but it's the, like the thing that happens after, which is like, it's like depressing almost, or you just treat it now. Like I just threw my cell phone, dude. And when I get my cell phone, the day it comes out, I'm not throwing my cell phone. I'm holding it like it's this precious little egg. But then after like three days, I'm like, Oh, it's, it's the thing I've always had, or it's something that I don't really need. And then you can throw it across the room and it's okay. Which is fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> but what did you, then I started talking to you about this shit and then you kind of turned well, it into something that could be, good for well yeah I, I, my, I guess my job here is to turn things into things that oh we're not recording I'm, not playing <laughs> <laughs> did you just ditch it at your fucking face <laughs> oh shit um, subscribe to us on youtube base, yeah so basically what like I, how, the job is to turn that and how does that make sense for creating and my thing was like okay so you know so many times creators are sitting there and they're like, okay, I don't have this thing and I need this thing because I don't, if I don't have this thing, I can't do this. Right. Or when I have this thing, my content will be this be better because I saw this person have it or whatever. And so you hold back and you think, oh, I can't make that because I don't have a gimbal. I can't make that because I need a, I need a prime lens. Right. I don't have that because blah, blah, blah. Then you, you know, either hold yourself from making that thing because you don't have it or you go and get it and then you get it and you realize that it's more than that, right? Or that thing didn't change what you thought it would, or it wasn't as easy to use, or you don't know, you haven't really mastered it yet. So you still have a lot longer way to go. And yeah, I think you, you like, when you said that you use it, you, we, we, we buy things as a crutch. Like I need a car because my car from high school that I drove out to California fucking died. Do I need a Tesla? Nah. Do I, could I get a fucking $5,000 car and it would get the job done? Yes. But then I add all these extra bullshit reasons of why I need this Tesla. This is why I need to spend $30,000 on a car or 40, however much this shit costs. This is all the reasons why. But then when you really look at it, you're just creating excuses. And that's what I love the most is that you tied yeah. into it was like, you thought if you got a Ronin and use a gimbal on t or whenever you, you were talking about this off camera, but you're like, yeah, I can, I can tell a story. Yeah, tell yeah. a story. Just right how, now. how you thought it would like change everything but yeah. then you realized oh shit there's things that well i thought i thought about this all that this idea made sense clicked with my experience because i remember you know before before working with you in person in coachella um i had never used a gimbal and i never had one i didn't buy one because you had a glide cam though i had a glide cam i was using a glide cam and the thing about the ronin I, I thought the Ronin gimbals were so cool because I was like, oh, it's, it automatically balances, like blah, blah, blah. You can just take it and run with it, especially I was enamored with the crane ones by the time we went on tour. But anyways, what I realized, and I remember thinking like, man, I can't get these certain shots because I don't have this, right? right? Like my, hand, my shots are all handheld or 
I want to do this with the gimbal or whatever. And then I go, the first time I use, I, Ben has it set up, I'm like, oh sick, I want to use this. Like, I've heard it's amazing things, blah, blah, blah. I get it and I use it, I'm like, oh, and you start realizing like, oh shit, like it's not, it's not as easy as you think or it doesn't automatically, you, you think it's something you just pick it up and then all of a sudden you get all these amazing shots. It's not the case. It takes, it takes it's a whole nother level of, of skill, a whole nother area of skill, of balance, of, of hand movement, of, of the way you walk, of the way you, you manage the weight of the camera with your body, right. blah, 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 X, Y, Z. And I started realizing like, oh, this, like, this is, it's not just to solve your problem. Like, oh, you buy it, cool, now I, and people think that. Like, you just buy it and that means you're gonna get the shots you see Ben make or whatever, you right. see this person make you don't realize that, like it takes a whole different level of skill. Right. And the same thing happened when we got the Ronin S and I had to le- I had to learn how to use that thing in like 30 minutes in the show. Um and I was just like frustrated but I kept at it cuz I had l- already learned like from the first experience, okay, I'm going to figure it out. It's just like you think it's going to be easy. Yeah, and that, you just what think I plug realized, and play and it works. Yeah. And it's just not the case and I feel like so many creators do that cuz they're like, "Oh, I need this Ronin or I need this gimbal." And then they you see them shoot and they just like robot turn it right. or like bobble it or yeah. do all those things and they think like oh why can't I get shots like I see? why can't I get the smooth shots that you see like what are you doing different do you, is it the camera you have and I think all these things hold you back because you think that once I have this thing I'll be able to do what I want to do and it's just right. not the case and like you and you're just holding yourself back and you're like oh I can't make this shot because I don't have a gimbal let's just use gimbals I think that's a great example because so many people want them and they cost a lot of money but like you see amazing people shooting videos, you know, what if it's just longer lenses and 120 and rocking and just trying to get those shots or maybe you should just try a different style and not use a gimbal for a little bit because everyone else is using them and right. you can find a different lane. And that's a whole tangent, but I think that's what reminded me of this cuz that's a purchase that I thought, "Oh, I can't do this certain thing unless I have this." Like that would solve the problem. And now and then once I bought it, cool. My kid has a Oh, here's another good example. Go, Dave. Fucking drones. go, Dave. Drones. I was going to say that next, Dave. Drones. I was literally about to say that <laughs> next, Dave. You want to go? <laughs> yes, I, I do. Because this is my favorite thing. When people think they need, they're like, oh, I need to get a drone so I can be like this fucking one man band, whatever, boom, boom, boom. Then I see that Instagram post where it's a fucking selfie, drone selfie, and it just starts out on some fucking wedding party or, who, or the drone op or whatever. And then it booms out. And it's like the shittiest speed ramp or they just let that clip go but then they turn the motherfucking drone and they're spinning it and it just is like the it has no purpose like they had no purpose when they did it they just they follow they oh this is what i see on the internet i think this is pretty close and they'll just do it and they're they're already putting the content out they're already advertising oh this is what i do for a living this is what i but you're not because you don't know how to do that and here's the problem is yes you can go take a drone at fucking phantom or whatever you want from dji or any other drone company but dji shout them out and <laughs> say I want selfie mode and you click selfie mode and then the fucking drone does what it's supposed to do. Cool. It just did the little speed ramp and now it's done. Now you feel confident that you could do that again and now you should charge clients for shit. And then all of a sudden, guess what? You're at a wedding and there's fucking interference from a massive building. And most of you guys probably don't know that this shit happens all the time because drones are getting doper, but it still happens when Take for example, I did a, I had to do a drone selfie for GZ and one in his order more music video. There's one little clip in there that you could see this fucking dope ass house and that's my drone selfie. But I had to fly the drone where the house is in the middle of nowhere in the woods and there's all this, this house is like fucking mad famous. I can't think of the dude's name of the house, but it's famous because it's all like cement, right? terrible for flying a drone terrible for taking a drone off it, you're supposed to sit here and calibrate it can't read it, every interference interference you can't yeah. take it off you're like if you do you're still it's still red it's not locking gps so you're like feeling unsafe and shit plus i'm flying with this fucking rapper that's famous and then i don't want to hit him in the face so i have had practice with it where i had to find a spot then i went on top of this cement thing and i had to take it off in interference mode or whatever and fly it so there's no gps and then i had to still pull off this move Whereas if you, the drone kid that just got his drone that thinks the selfie mode is going to work every time, you're in that same situation. You're now flying a drone around a client. This client's worth millions of dollars. You're going to try to fly this thing fucking close to this person. You have no skills and you think that this selfie app might just fucking work. And it doesn't. And then you look like an idiot because you're on set and you can't fly a drone. Because, But you said you do. You, you, you have a whole website dedicated to the motherfucker with cool little pictures that you took and all this shit. That is going to shoot you in the foot. 
And that's the problem is that you just think that this shit's just going to solve a problem or you think that this is just a tool that you just pull out and say, Boom, do the right. do the job tool. Well, it's not. Everything is skill based. Like you, you can't lean on that shit without having practice and, and really put in the work where I had by default. I, it's not that I got it and just was tired of the selfie app. It's because I didn't have a selfie app when I learned how to fly a fucking drone. Right. So when I had to, I had to, that, I was doing selfies before that was a thing. Like selfie, that shit was my shit back in the day. Not saying I'm the person that created it, but like I fucking loved it. And then I did the boomerangs on top of it and then it became like a thing. But now it's so easy just to, oh, this is gonna solve my problem. And that, but when the client's there and there's some, and it's windy and, and the bride gets too fucking close and you're so used to letting this thing auto fly itself and this bride's hair gets caught up in the props and now you are a fucking idiot in front of mom and dad and someone else that just paid you four racks to come through and do this yeah. shit that you said you were really good at doing and you're not like and another thing is i think that here's the thing i learned um i guess it's like here's where i learned the, the true skill of it like where i'm like oh shit like these drones are advanced but this is like something i got to dedicate i got to go out and fly my drone like three times three four times a week if i want to get to this level Hell yeah. right because every day all all tour ben had the drone and i'm always i was fascinated by the thing because i never i had never flown a drone before that so and we'd be in these crazy places in the in the world and you to see these aerial views and i always be over his shoulder like fucking watching him like how does he do it how does he use his hands like how is he so fin like how can he finesse like the pans and the movement so qu quick so the whole time i knew it was difficult right but after i get on tour after seeing that especially like in south africa like where I'm literally pointing out this building. I'm like, yo, you should shoot this building. And then you, he, he's like flying in from like miles away, like into the city downtown area. Oh yeah. Like finessing it downward so he could pull off this like pan up reveal and not hit any buildings or not hit any phone lines. And also like, we can't see the drone. You know what I mean? Yeah. For this, mm. for the, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> and like, and but you know what I mean? And but see, I had seeing to, those but I had shots. A way. Right. I had a way to do that without crashing exactly shit, like. and seeing those shots and then getting and after the tour i'm like yo i need to get a drone because that that shit was so dope and i get one and you try to fly the thing and you realize just how hard as shit that is to pull off a finesse movement one safely but two cinematically right. where the movement is gradual and slow and and doesn't jerk right and how hard that is and just thinking like oh i bought a drone like cool now i could do this type of stuff right you know what i mean yeah. and it can't and one thing about the modes is it's like the modes are cool, right? Like I told I told the story before where the first day I got my drone, I wanted to try out one of those modes and I set it and I set modes, I set modes being like a feature in that feature like a, where like selfie it, version or circle right, orbit or Right. And I like I like the orbit out the box. It was like cool. Like I I just want to test it out. I like, like the orbit out the box. Out, out the box. <laughs> like I wanted to just test it. I had a place where it worked, there was a downtown, and I was like, I know this would look sick. And first fly shot a little dance video with it and I thought it was tight. Right. Right? But then you start to realize like those modes are cool, the the different auto modes, but they don't first off, they don't really fly that cinematically. Secondly, they like jerk and they only fly in like one path. So it like if any of those situations happen where, okay, there's a tree here. Now you can't use that mode because it's gonna hit the tree. Or right. it, it's just gonna stop and jerk. Or right. it's only gonna fly one way and you can't really do everything you can. You can't turn it the way you want to. Or you what happens when your fast. client's like, oh Dave, I want you to circle around this person, but then I want you to go a little wider and go behind that tree and then go up higher and go behind that building, but keep a perfect orbit. And you're right. like, um, well the app doesn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, that's what the difference is, is like you can't, expect that you're just going to be great at something you had definitely have to work hard at it or whatever and i just i i love the drone as like an example because there's so many things like no, i think the like drone's a good example. mark c's video the one take that i did remember right he comes out the door and i'm flying by trees and shit and then come down and go underneath lights and then and, and it makes it look like there's one camera being just on, on a ronin mm -hmm. but then it like leads off a balcony and it just goes forever and it was all one exact movement but like there's no app for that shit there is the you know pathways but that doesn't work in that environment because it's too low and it's too close to shit and there's all these things that fuck it up but like though you can use those features and they're very helpful tools but they're tools and the drone is a tool but you have to master that motherfucker yeah. same with a lens same with a fucking right oh. and i think if we want to tie it back to the beginning this like it's like one one point of it is one point of it is you can't let like you might want some shit but the knowledge of knowing that knowledge that if you got it 
that doesn't mean it's automatically solved should allow you to realize like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't let that hinder me from like trying what I want to try or figuring out another way to do it. I but also, that. but also understanding that when you buy that thing, there's a whole mastery to things that go past it that you makes you realize like, oh, you know, you can't be have that feeling like I need this. I need right. the Tesla. I need the iPad. Because once you get the iPad, then you got to figure out how to use the iPad productively. Yeah, how do facts. I connect it to Photoshop? How do I even use this thing? It's, and you think you just buy it and then the commercial tells you like, cool, I'm going to be like editing my photos with this like, like crazy when you realize like, oh, that's a whole different skill uh -huh. too, you know? Yep. And I think also what, what I love about it too, from what he just said, it's like you come off of saying, I need this, I need this, I need this. And you allow it to not let you do some shit. That's the fucking worst thing in the world. I struggle with that all the time. I'm like, oh, we can't do this, this, and that because we don't have this. Right. This podcast. I fucking hate that we don't have three A7S2s. We have a bunch of other cameras that are all great cameras, but they're limiting us because they only record for 30 minutes. But the A7S2 can be hacked, so it records forever. And now I'm sitting here like, oh, Dave's out of town and I want to record a podcast and I can't because I only have one camera instead of three. But the other day, TF was here and we recorded a podcast, which you can hear Patreon one week early if you want to get on. I think it drops this Sunday. <laughs> uh, but we recorded that podcast with just one one camera and it became a fucking great conversation. Like the second half of that conversation is crazy. Right. And, and would it be worth it to not record that because you didn't have two exactly. cameras that are the same? And there there have been there have been a couple of days where you're like you'll get fixated on the on something mm -hmm. whether it's a camera or a mic or whatever because you want things to be perfect or whatever and then i'm here to be like like you know our cameras are working great right now in the sense of like can they last us do we need to drop this money does it does it limit us from creating what we want to create just because we don't have it at this level right. yet yeah exactly you know what i mean yeah and like that's a that's a type of mentality we you know you we're trying to connect to like other things i feel like it's it's I think everyone's probably struggling with that shit and I'm sure you, right now you're like, oh my God. There's one thing too. that you want that you you think you need that you think is going to be the thing. Like, man, I even, I even like for one shoot, I, I want, one thing I really want is a Canon Prime 50 or longer, a fast lens. Right. And, and one thing I really want is for you to get off Canon and go to Sony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, that, so there's there's a shoot, and I always use I always use a twenty four to seventy. I I love that lens. A lot of people talk shit about, it, but I love it. It's the You're best. fucking stupid if you yeah. talk shit on it. It's, it's the best. It's the best lens. Very um, very. And very it's so sharp and fast. And I got I went out and rented this lens because I wanted to come through on the photos. And I take it to the photo shoot, and I realized like oh like the focusing, like tack focus on that is just a little different. It's a little slower maybe, or I gotta do some tweaking in the settings of my camera to get it to really lock in with this lens. And it made my shooting process slower because I was like missing focus on some shots. Mm. Whereas 24 to 70, even though it's 2.8 all day. But that focus. also comes with you having spent time with the lens right. and now you know how to use it. And all of a sudden you just rent some shit thinking you're gonna be great with it. Yeah, you think because you see, oh, this person shot with it, cool. And I, that's that was another example of like, okay, it still takes more. Like just cause you get it, take it and take it to shoot doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're gonna get that photo that you saw. That's you why rehearsals I mean? are so key. That's why scouting makes so much sense. Like the worst thing that happens when you do a, a big shoot is if you're like, oh, cool, uh, I'm going to book a, uh, we're going to do a $100,000 music video tomorrow. And you expect that the place that you saw on, on Airbnb that you rented or, or share space or whatever the fuck, peer space is going to be what it is. Like we had that happen to us we during Lewis House Doc. And we had to eat that fucking cost because we thought, cool, we found this spot. It looks like a great location. This is a perfect place to do Lewis's main interview. And then we get there and we have an hour and a half till Lewis is going to get there. We're there with the DP. We're setting up. We're trying to get the lights right. But this space is fucking trash. It is not what it looks like online. And that's our fault for not for trusting the internet. You know what I mean? We didn't go in advance, take a look at the spot to be like, oh, we could have him here and this and this and this and shot us in the foot. It cost us a whole fucking day rate for a DP, a grip, all an editor, like all these people that we had to spend money on. And we had to take the L on that shit, me and Andrew. And that's our fault and we learned our lesson and and it, it, we already knew that we should have scouted but there wasn't enough time in that that case they're just we were like so busy that we we're just like fucking finger fingers crossed the spots fire right and that's how you learn your lesson so it's you always want to be able to take precaution and, and live in something for a while before you can i don't know take bank it, into on it, it yeah bank on it to solve your problem and even yeah. then you don't want to bank on it because right. you don't know what's going to go wrong right yeah you yeah. never know but 
I don't know. There's so many variations of what we could talk yeah. about on this shit, but I love it. I think this was a good. I think this was good morning roast. I liked it. Well, as long as you're happy, Dave, because it's your week. Because your podcast episode comes out on Sunday. I'm pretty sure it's trash, but it's all good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't listen to it. Yeah, what's that? Just don't listen. Yeah, to it's it. like that. Whatever that meme is, like, or no, it's like how people are always trying to advertise their music. No, it's always when people comment in on, on people's Instagram posts and like don't click on my profile i promise you don't right. want to see the shit right. and i'm yeah. like uh, or it's like when you tell a kid like don't do some shit and they yeah. really do it don't do it yeah. don't touch that pan anyway don't don't listen to dave's podcast episode no, I'm, this I'm sunday joking. we definitely went long though <laughs> but if you listen to it no nah, dude you. i i think that i some of the long episodes there's a reason why is because i have a really deep like i've had a long lasting relationship with these people that I, that i end up going mad long um, besides Justin Odisha, show, I just met him that day and we just happened to go along, but it was my first podcast episode. So I yeah. was nervous as fuck. Um, but Andrews, we went the same length. Like it's like a good two and a half hour podcast episode. Me and Dave talking about his story, but we cover a lot of ground and yeah, we, we cover also a lot have, on We also tour. have a lot of experience, uh, together, like a lot of memories and short packed in a really short amount of time trying to figure out how to tell it all. Yeah. We're going to have to no way that makes sense. One. Um, anyway, make sure to check that out Sunday. The contest that we, uh, are announcing, Sunday, make sure to listen to it. It's the beginning of the episode. You're going to want to hear it. Um, and we also give a good little discount code uh, halfway through the episode. So check that motherfucker out. Swag. All right, cool. Well, if you listen to this episode, um, we still haven't really defined what it is that we want people to do so we know. Because it's got to be like different than... I ha- I keep seeing people drop the shit emojis and, and tagging me. But that's too confusing because I just think I'm like, why this person just put a bunch of like the dick emojis in and tag yeah, me on the, Dave's no we gotta we gotta come <laughs> we gotta come some different no that's your post with that I, I know and but I keep I getting I keep getting shit emojis on pictures of Mary J Blige and Nas like two <laughs> yeah, legendary people I saw it the other day I was like what the fuck is this dude talking I'm like, shit I hope about Mary's people aren't looking at this like why is well, sweating yeah why is there a bunch of shit emojis <laughs> uh, so if you listen to this podcast episode uh, just know that if you're not a Patreon supporter and you want to you know a gain value and, and more insight and unlock our discord server that we have our private discord server you can do that but also when we hit 100 patrons there's a contest that dave and i have for each other i'm gonna read read the read the settings off to you i don't even remember what it was what happens when we hit 100 i'll have it right here i think it's a 100 yard dash when we hit 100 patrons i will challenge dave to a 100 yard dash race out front of the office the loser will have to stand in a hollywood dumpster for five minutes holding an umbrella while reporting the weather. So we're definitely going to shoot that with like long zooms and lab mics and shit. For yeah, sure. We got to be far away. <laughs> it's got to be like fucking, uh, what's that? The prank people from Venice, like that type of shit. Yeah. Dad cam it. Fact. So if you want to see, it'll probably be Dave that's staying in the dumpster. Cause I'm fast as fuck. Uh, J- jokes on him. I'm going to smoke. His we'll ass. see <laughs> if you want to see either of us in a dumpster, Support us on Patreon right now, patreon.com slash black window cream. Uh, and the the how to charge a client guide will be coming out very soon on there as well as a bunch of other shit. So check out all the perks and figure out which one fits you. And that's it. Shop BWNC for merch. Yes. That's it. We got new stuff coming hopefully soon. No, we do. I have an idea. I was going to tell you about it after Sorry. this. Uh, fucking. After this secret secret. <laughs> no, let's actually go talk to... I, I do want to talk about this merch idea to the to the boardroom tier okay or in the discord because i feel like that's what we should be doing in there right so if you want to go see what this idea is go join discord uh bwc boardroom yeah we should do that all right cool all right see you next wednesday you motherfuckers peace